everybody, last Outrider here. What do you think of my new effect? Is this a good look for me? Should I keep this one? I, I think I will too. So we're off to um, part two of the rise of Logan Grimnar and Champions of Fenris. This one is called The Shadow of Russ. Good, let's go. When Logan Grimnar was young, the Sky Warriors saw the seeds of greatness within him. Since then, he has proven himself a fearless in battle, wise in counsel, tempered in spirit. Not since the time of Lehman Russ has the chapter known such a leader. The Wolf Lord's ascension to the chapter master see seemed to be blessed by the great Primarch himself. Logan Grimnar's homeworld of Fenris is a planet that spends most of its solar year gripped by ice and snow. Once each cycle, Fenris draws close to the star, the wolf's eye. Its frozen seas thaw, the mantle breaks, and boiling magma bleeds out from the heart of the world. In this time, the planet is remade anew, its human tribes setting off in their longboats to find new homes so that they might survive another year. From this harsh and brutal environment, the Space Wolves recruit their battle brothers. Logan once lived amongst the Fenrisians, a young warrior from the Iron Blood tribe. Now, I read over this before doing this video, and I want everybody to have a good context of what I'm about to read. As anybody who knows anything about the Astartes, you're, they're recruited as prepubescent boys between the ages of 8 and 12. Okay? So, keep this mental imagery in mind as I read the rest of this fluff, because... Logan is going to be between 8 and 12 year old boy during this. Now, obviously, out of the Fenrisians, not all of them are selected to be space marines. So they're going to be big and men. And apparently, probably big, strong, nasty men that an 8 to 12 year old boy is fighting and this 8 to 12 year old boy has his own crew and his own ship in honor of that story i have created this video effect to properly give you the context of what i'm reading here we go logan grimnar's i'll start it again yes Home. Da, 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 da. Wait. Ah, da, 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 da. In this time, the planet was made new. Da, 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 da. Ah, Logan once lived among the Fenrisians, a young warrior of the Iron Blood tribe. Even in his early years, the future Wolf Lord made a name for himself among the Fenrisians as a fearless fighter and bold sailor. However, it was not until a fateful battle on the Sea of Blades that the eyes of the Sky Warriors fell upon him and his destiny was changed forever. The Sea of Blades. Land is life on Fenris, and only those tribes that can find a place to beach their longships for the long winter to come have a chance to survive. Land is also scarce. And a tribe must be willing to fight for what it finds, least another take it from them. Sometimes, massive land masses will rise up out of the sea, bringing with them treasure-filled ruins and precious materials for the forging of weapons and the construction of ships. Um, I'm going to give a quick pause right there for a second. What did they use to make the construction of ships out of from these mysterious land masses that rose? That's actually a good question because I highly doubt they rose out of the ocean with trees fully grown on them. So what 
What are these long boats constructed of, one would wonder? Hmm. Back to the story. In these times, many tribes will fight for dominance of these rare prizes, and the sea will become filled with long boats. When the Kraken Spur rose up from the boiling sea, Logan sailed with the Iron Blood Tribe and their allies, the Tide Hounds, to its shores. With strength of arm and ruthless cunning, he, remember what I said about being a boy, fought against the Sea Devil and Ice Fang tribes, straining in the smoking rocks of the spur, bright, staining the smoking rocks of the spur, bright with their blood. In the ruins of the Temple of Morakai, Logan's crew were ambushed by the leader of the Sea Devils, Thorgil Ice Tooth, and his Kraken Guard. In a matter of minutes, the once silent halls of the temple echoed with the sounds of battle. Thorgil and his hulking reavers overwhelmed the Iron Bloods until Logan alone, yes, here's the mental imagery time, a gore splattered axe in either hand stood atop the altar of Morakai. From high above the ruins, a wolf priest watched the combat unfold. For days, the priest had followed the exploits of the young warrior as his crew fought in a series of daring and masterful raids against his foes. Now he stood witness as Logan fought off a dozen Fenrisian tribesmen, his axes a blur of crimson movement as they opened throats and hacked off limbs. Finally, Thorgil himself challenged Logan, and the two warriors clashed over the piled corpses of their crews. As Logan buried his axe in Thorgil's skull, the wolf priest could have sworn he saw the shadow of a hulking, power armored giant with a flowing mane of hair rising up behind the victorious tribesmen. Uttering a prayer to the emperor, the priest knew that the All-Father blessed this youth. When the Iron Blood Scouts found the ruins of the temple, they discovered only the tangled bodies of Thorgil and his men, but no sign of Logan. Now obviously we know this was supposed to be a very heroic battle scene, but for anybody, if, I mean, you can't say for realism's sake, but for anybody who knows the true fluff of 40k, that scene would have been acted out by an 8 to 10 year old boy, beating off hordes, who was a captain of his own ship, and beat off hordes of hulking Fenrisian, uh, what were they called? Reaper, Kraken Guard? <laughs> With two axes. Yes. Yes. That. If you get people who are actually fans of the chapter to write the fluff, you won't have mistakes like this. That's the only thing I can say. Okay, let's go on. Well, oh, here's a little quote. The shadow of Russ follows this one, like none I have seen before. His will be the fate of the chapter, each woven with each other. Ulrich the Slayer, which sounds suspiciously like if he was going to be doing a Yoda impression and said, Ooh, the shadow of Russ follows this one it does. Aha! Sorry. <clears throat> In the foothills of Rus, the wolf priest was not the only one to see the greatness of Rus within the young Logan Grimnar. A warrior named Ulrich would remain close to the recruit, constantly testing him and seeing if he was indeed worthy of the weird his mentor perceived within him. The first hints of his greatness came during the trial of Morkai when Logan slew the ice troll Frost blood, a dread beast, beast that had killed dozens of the chapter's recruits. In a cave filled with the remains of Henrician warriors, Logar jammed 
Logan, sorry, jammed the broken bone into the frost blood's eye, howling his rage into the beast's face, even as its fangs savaged his arm. The Canis Helix bonded with Logan as though he had been born to become a space marine. And in time, the young warrior was inducted into the Asvald Stormtrack's great company as a blood claw. Logan proved his skill and valor repeatedly in wars across the Sea of Stars, taking to the life of a Sky Warrior as easily as if he had been sailing the seas of Fenris. Which is a very interesting characteristic uh, characterization because I could have sworn sailing the seas of Fenris would be described in just about any other way than easy. But apparently, his becoming is it's easy to sail the seas of Sinus, according to the fluff. However, what made the future Wolf Lord stand out from his brothers was not his bravery or his coming, but the boundless charisma he wielded like a weapon. His easy grin and ready jest earned him the trust of everyone he met, even the old and cynical longfangs of the company who grudgingly admitted that they had warmed to the little whelp. After over a century of war and unparalleled heroism, Logan Grimnar had risen to earn a place amongst the Asvald's wolf guard often keeping the counsel of the wolf lord and always close to his side. As always, the wolf priest kept close watch on Grimnar, and Ulgrit taught the young warrior all there was to know about the traditions and history of the chapter. When Asphalt finally fell in battle before the Cyclopean Rift, Logan Grimnar was elected wolf lord in his place by a unanimous assent of his fellow wolf guard. And then, the first war for Armageddon. Favored by the chapter, and with the shadow of greatness upon him, it was only a matter of time before Logan Grimnar ascended to the rank of Great Wolf. Few Space Wolf Battle Brothers had ever seen a warrior as skilled or a general so gifted as Grimnar, and all who stood in his presence could not help but be swayed by his rich booming voice. As the priest had foreseen, Grimnar was like a hero of old, elevating the chapter to new heights of greatness. Logan Grimnar's first great test as chapter master was to be upon the war-torn world of Armageddon, an industrial hub of over a hundred systems. For over a hundred systems, the hive world was a linchpin munitions plant for the Imperium. Angron, demon primarch of the World Eater's Traitor Legion, struck Armageddon in the 5th century of the 41st millennium. Leaving a trail of blood and death in his wake as he stormed out of the Eye of Terror. In the first terrible days of the invasion, Angron and his chaotic hosts ravaged the world's hive cities. The Astra Militarum's Steel Legion, Okay, I gotta call a check, fact check on that. Is the Steel Legion a part of the Astra Militarum now? Because I could have sworn they were just Imperial Guard. We'll find out. Where was I? Ah, the Steel Legion of Armageddon fought valiantly with the great determination. But they were as men before vengeful demigods, and the fields of battle were soon littered with their broken and bloody corpses. The world eaters would have turned the entire planet into an abattoir dedicated to their dark god had it not been for the intervention of the space wolves. Answering the call from the imperiled world, imperiled world, Logan Grimnar led the entire chapter to Armageddon. On the banks of the mile wild river Charon, the Space Wolves and Steel Legion made their stand. Logan proved his leadership time and again, 
turning back the chaos host and holding together the armies of the Imperium by force of will. When the world eaters and their demonic allies broke upon the banks of the Charon, Angron turned east and personally led an assault towards Hell's Reach and Infernus Hives. Twelve bloodthirsters forming a bodyguard around the demon Primarch. Here, Logan showed not just his fearlessness in battle, but also his wisdom. Whereas many other wolf lords would have struck Angron head on, hungry for personal glory and the thrill of battle, Logan knew that courage and steel would not be enough. Just before the space wolves attacked, the great wolf let out a piercing howl. Responding to his pre-planned signal, an entire brotherhood of Grey Knight Terminators teleported into the midst of Angron and his bloodthirsters, the psychic warriors turning the tide in the Imperium's favor. In the aftermath of the war, Logan was to show another of his rare qualities, compassion for those weaker than he. When the Inquisition deported most of the surviving defenders of Armageddon to labor camps to perish out of sight for fear of taint of chaos, Logan almost went to war over such an injustice. Only the intervention of Bjorn the Fell-Handed stayed his hand. Though the Great Wolf was, has never forgiven the Inquisition's actions. Now, that's also interesting because they said almost went to war. And if I remember the novel correctly, which they're referring to is called The Emperor's Gift, they did go to war for quite a long time, spanning the subsector and all the way to Fang itself with an orbital bombardment of the planet, which was described as even worse than when uh, Magnus the Red had invaded. But apparently, now that has not happened. Here's a little more. The Axe of Morkai. Logan Grimnar's weapon is a trophy of war, prized, prized from the cold, dead hands of a powerful champion of the Dark Gods. It was upon the battlefield of Armageddon that the Great Wolf won his... this fabled blade amid the blood and fire of the battle on the banks of the river Charon. After hours of bitter fighting, the river ran red with blood and the bodies of cultists and traitor guardsmen were piled high. World Eater Chaos Space Marines attempted to cross the river in Baroque armored barges or over bridges melded from the bodies of the screaming slaves and the traitors charging across the flesh structures to reach the space wolves, <coughs> <coughs> seeing a change, a chance to turn the tide of battle. <clears throat> Logan Grimnar led his wolf guard down into the gore-clouded water to meet the berserk warriors of Corn head-on. <clears throat> the Chaos Champion, Akor Doomflare charged out of the ranks of the world, eat world eaters, his ruin encrusted axe cutting down two of Grimnar's wolf's guard in the span of a few moments. Suddenly, the great wolf found himself fighting for his life. Doomflare's insane fury pushed him back towards the Imperium's defensive line. With an incoherent cry, the Cornate Champion struck the flat of Grimnar's Frostblade, shattering it into a million glittering shards. Doomflare's moment of triumph was also his last, as the Great Wolf lunged inside of his Executioner's swing, ripping off his skull-faced helm with a clawed hand and striking his fangs into the exposed throat underneath. As Doomflare fell into the bloody river, Grimnar snatched up his opponent's crimson steel axe, cutting a path back to his wolf guard through knots of homicidal corn berserkers. For the rest of the campaign on Armageddon, Logan fought with the axe, and upon his return to Fenris, he had it reforged, dubbing the axe Morkai. <laughs> 
Oh, 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 oh. was that manly enough for you? Does everybody feel their testosterone levels just increasing as we read such bolter porn? Yeah, we do. Okay, then next time we will go on to part three, the war of the wolf. Until next time, bye. Ha ha ha.